Hello and welcome to Jennifer Natters. I am Jennifer and this is my Knitting and Nattering video podcast where I go on and on about whatever I've been up to in the last wee while. It has been a wee while and then some. Back in January, I recorded a podcast and then hadn't uploaded it or edited it or anything yet. But then in February, I had time. So I'm like, I'll just record another podcast and then I can edit them and put them up when I have time and energy and inclination for that sort of thing. Except then everything went wrong. And January's podcast, most of it wound up getting deleted. And I couldn't figure out what was going on. And I f kept getting error messages and it was too big a file. And it was an absolute disaster for January. And I didn't want to update upload the February one without having uploaded the January one because I tried re-recording it but I only re-recorded part of it. So I eventually got January up and then even more eventually just this past week I got February up. So hopefully I am back clean slate. I can start recording again. Recording is the fun part. Editing is like, ugh, that's just the thing I have to do. I really thought it would work where I could just record a bunch of videos, but no. <laughs> have to do both halves. I haven't introduced myself yet. Hello, I am Jennifer. This is Jennifer Natters. I think I did this part. I am an American living in Scotland with my husband, two children, and three cats, a hamster, and a fish in descending order of height. Um, I am already thirsty. I've got Earl Grey iced tea with lemon diluting juice. It's one of my summer drinks that I like. I apologize for the incredible sunshine. If, you, if I had been recording podcasts, you would know that incredible sunshine is not a thing I could have anticipated for today, nor is it a thing I can apologize for. It has been so dreek these last several weeks and just raining and cold. It has been like 12 degrees most days, 12 to 14. Um, I think that's like 50 in Celsius. No, 50 in Fahrenheit because I'm doing Celsius. Uh, yeah, today it's supposed to get up to possibly 18 and I know the rest of the world like makes fun of Scotland when it gets up to 18, which 20, which 20 is 70 Fahrenheit and everybody else is like, oh my goodness, you guys can't handle the heat. It actually feels really, really hot. Um, one of my friends who is also an American living here in Scotland was making fun of Scottish people for just that and then we went out somewhere and it was 16 and we were sat in the sun and she was like oh my I'm dying it's so hot so I don't know what it is but Scotland genuinely at the most ridiculously low temperatures feels very warm and also delightful after like three weeks of rain we did have a nice spell at the end of May and now then it went all rainy again. And today, finally, we get some summer weather. I'm all over the place. Today is the Thursday, June 20th. It is almost midsummer. Uh, this time of year, we, I mean, I'm recording this. It's almost 10 a.m. and the sun is like almost straight overhead. It has, of course, uh, I think sunrise right now is officially 4 a.m. but it never gets fully dark it is just like twilight um, I've got an app that tells me civic sunrise that's the one that's 4 a.m. astronomical sunrise and nautical sunrise and nautical sunrise is like twilight and the number is the same for sunrise and sunset. It, it doesn't happen. Um, so yeah, it... <sighs> school's almost out for the year. 
I'm doing life stuff and I shouldn't be doing life stuff, but school's almost out for the year. And in previous years, it's been gloriously sunny and warm through most of June. And then like the week school gets out, that's when it starts and we have a big rainy spell and it's dreek and cold and then school's back in and the sun comes out. So if this holds, fingers crossed, we might actually have some nice sunny days. Go to Nairn, which is a local beach and has a little yarn shop. I am getting ahead of myself again. Because I haven't done this since February, I have been making a list of finished objects, although I have finished at least two more objects, three objects, since I wrote this list, since I last updated the list. I have not recorded any whips or anything like that because who knows, like they would just move from one list to the other. I can start with what I'm wearing, even though it is actually it's a third item that's not a butterfly just flew overhead so the shadow went across the floor um i am wearing a tolsta tea the yarn was an acquisition it was discounted on wool warehouse as it is at some point throughout the year uh drops bell this is the color cherry my modification rebecca clove you don't no, the Tolsta Tea is by Rebecca Klo. Rebecca Klo recently released an update for the Tolsta Tea to include bust shaping. Uh, as she says, she's not a person who needs bust shaping, so she doesn't generally include it in any of her patterns. Uh, but she updated the Tolsta to include bust shaping. I knit this before that update came out. That was just this past Friday. So that is available now but it wasn't in the pattern I was doing and I can work it out. I mean, if nothing else, I can just copy it from another pattern, one of Isolde's probably, that has it built in for like whatever gauge I'm doing. Uh, but what I did with this one was I, I didn't have gauge anyway. I don't read, I'm not comfortable knitting at a super loose gauge because I think in general, that means your fibers are going to wear out faster. If you're knitting with something like a fuzzy mohair silk, then the strength of the mohair and the silk can counteract that and let you get a very open gauge in a way that will create a fabric worth having, basically, that's not just gonna wear out really quickly. So I did the DK size, but I didn't have the DK gauge. So I cast on the neckline for the size I would have been knitting if I had been at gauge. And then I just increased to a larger size because uh, I didn't want the neckline really open. And then I shifted the raglan shaping for the sleeves back four stitches on either side. So I've got eight extra stitches in the front versus the back because I need more space in the front than I do in the back. And I knit that and it's great, except it's kind of been stretching out. And I think the sleeves are a bit big. Um, like it's really comfortable to wear, but then I do, I think, I was watching Annie Uti Knits um and she's a Finnish knitwear designer and she was talking about a t-shirt she knit in drop spell and that she thinks drop spell stretches width wise I think that's the case I would be more than happy to knit this again I mean I probably will I'd be more than happy to knit again in drop spell I don't tend to like most of the colors in summer yarns they tend to be either very muted or very beige. So like pastels or beiges or really gray tones. Um, like I have another top I made in King Cole Linendale, which is the same fiber makeup, um, the same kind of fiber blend as Drop Spell. And it's a purple and it's a nice purple, but it's just, it's like a gray tone purple and I really do best in uh, very clear cool tones um, no grays 
no pale, no white. Um, yeah, very, very vivid tones, very vivid, cool tones is my sweet spot. So yeah, I would knit it again. I would try the bust shaping that's now included in the pattern. And I really like wearing this. I think it's very comfortable. It lets a breeze through, even though it's a DK weight. Um, yeah, I like it. It is slightly cropped, which I think is how the pattern is written. Wear it with like high-waisted skirts tends to be my summer outfit. Um, skirts over either leggings or uh, like capri tights. I don't like tights over my toes, but yeah, that's that's what I'm wearing. <laughs> I'm so out of practice. This is we're already 12 minutes in, and all I've covered is what I'm wearing and the weather. You can tell it's a British podcast when they have to go through the weather. Uh, finished objects. Ooh, I've got one that I was talking about last time. Actually, do you know what? Let's do what's behind me, which is a corner to corner blanket that I was crocheting for Kitten, my youngest. I finally finished it. I did have to order another ball of the yarn. It is a different dye a lot. It is noticeable, but not, I think, anything to worry about. I have not woven in the ends. I just grabbed it back from her today. Um, the moment it was off the hook, she stole it. She was off with it. She's like, yay, it's finally done. Uh, this is being knit. I brought my ball bands, which I've been hanging on to so that I could tell you about things. Uh, Botic Squirrel from Stylecraft. It is a DK. It's 80% premium acrylic, 20% wool. This is the color Meadow, which is very pretty, except it's not a rainbow. Uh, the colors go pink, yellow, orange, green, blue, purple. The yellow and orange are in the wrong order for it to be rainbow. And they are the only ones in the wrong order. So it just looks like they got the rainbow wrong. Um, but yeah, that's what that is. So it is finally done. I started it maybe two years ago. It's an occasional project for me. But I've got my... This is one of the things that got deleted from my January episode and never re-recorded. Libby is, my cat, is now looking to see if she can go through the door to the conservatory of the rest of the house. It is closed, but the window's open. She could go outside and around, but she's just sat there staring at the door. Helen of Giddy Yarns is doing a bingo thing. It's kind of a make nine where you come up with your own nine goals for the year. And one of them, the center one, is, for me, is finish a blanket. This is the blanket I finished. I knew I was close to done, so I finished it. Mm. Excuse me, and now I have crocheted a rainbow corner to corner blanket for both of my children. They each have one and they look different enough that they will never confuse them. This one I think is slightly bigger. I think I made it wider before making it longer. I don't know. They're, they're what they are, and they're done. And yeah, that is the first thing on my bingo challenge that I finished. So maybe I will get the ends woven in before I give it back to Rainbow. Uh, there we are. Ouch, my wrist is hurting. My birthday weekend, I had a small fall, but I was holding on to something and this wrist, this wrist, caught me so I didn't like completely go splat but this hand kind of just got jammed between me and something hard and just I don't know it's twinging still like every so often it just aches I, I mean I must have twisted it the wrong way or something last time I was working on this is the 
hot cider, hot, hot spiced cider cowl by Helen Stewart. It was one of her knit vent patterns this past year. And this is knit in Giddy Yarns. Doot, doot, doot. Doot, 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 doot. I have my scraps. I knit it in a DK. This is the Long Lake 100% Superwash Merino. And then I held it with the Baby Surrey Alpaca in the color Pacific. And this one is 300 meters for 50 grams. This is currently discontinued on her website. Ow. Why is it? it hasn't hurt in a while, but now it's hurting again. Um, it is discontinued right now on Helen's, as I am recording this, on Helen's website because she is going to be doing the 400 meter, the slightly lighter one that is more of a substitution for the patterns that call for mohair silk because those do tend to come at the 400 meters for 50 grams. Uh, yeah, so I knit the cowl. Uh, I did the smaller size, but then I think I did extra repeats lengthwise. Um, mine is ever so slightly Now I can't think of what the word is. Uh, it's a little wider at the bottom than it is at the top because I started, I'm usually a very loose knitter. I usually have to go down a needle size or two to get gauge. Uh, so I started with a smaller needle and then decided the fabric was a bit stiff and dense. So I went up a needle size and then I decided it still wasn't quite what I wanted. So I went up another needle size which means that when you wear it, it's a little more tapered around the neck and a bit stiffer, so it holds its form, and then a bit softer and drapier lower down. Did I refer to my youngest as kitten? Because she's usually rainbow and the oldest is usually kitten. Anyway, my oldest has stolen this from me, even though it was like, it was one of the weeks when it was really, really hot. She found it sitting on my sewing table waiting for me to record a podcast about it and she was like oh this is lovely and stole it and I let her because I'd like to knit it again in so with my leftover Surrey and another ball of that was the room but if you heard the bingly bingly wing and another ball of Helen's yarn which was Kings and Queens of Narnia and this is held with the Pacific. I think that looks like rainbow fish in all the best ways. And this is a North Wind headband by Isolde Teague, which is a free pattern. Um, I've knit it before. I'm pretty sure I put that with hold music. One moment, please. Aha. I've knit it before. Ow, my wrist. I've knit it before once for Rainbow, my youngest, and then once for myself. This is Zauber Ball in the, the six ply where they ply two different colors together. I know the name of the yarn. I don't like saying that word because it is ableist. Uh, but it does random gradients. And like when I was when I was able to go running, I would wear this as a headband a lot. So I knew I liked the pattern. I did this one as a much bigger and fluffier, like that's how the pattern is designed to be a big fluffy one. I think I actually kind of prefer the smaller ones, but this was, I wore it a lot. The only thing is when I'd wear it, like it would smoosh my hair up. So I'd look like that dinosaur, <laughs> the one who had the frilly ruff that would pop up in the Jurassic Park and then it would spit poison. 
but it had the the double uh the double crest on its head that's what i look like when i wear this because it just smushes my hair up into sides but if you're cold enough to need it then you probably don't care so yeah i did that and i still have Uh, apparently I used 11 grams of the Surrey fluff for the cowl because my number went from 23 to 12 grams for what I have left. And this says I have 24 grams left. So I could probably do one in this to match like this one. But I just love, I mean just... I knit a beloved bonnet was what I knit with the Kings and Queens of Narnia on its own. And like, I liked it fine. I didn't love the way the color winded it up, but I just cannot get over how much I love it with the Pacific. That's like favorite color combination ever. And then, so I mentioned I'd used the Zauber ball to make the headband with the rest of that ball. I can't remember if I finished the ball or not. Um, I've been making myself a no part pattern cowl. This one wound up coming out very much like a dickie. It has a high neck and then it just goes round over my shoulders and it's a good thing to wear under like a coat or a cardigan or something because it just does a full coverage of warmth. I'm not going to put it on because it is roughly at the temperature of the sun. And this is how it knit up. I just, you know, I cast on, I looked up a sport weight hat dimensions. I figured that would be good for the top of it. And then every so often I just increased evenly, um, and then I was doing more and more increases as I got towards the bottom. So this has been something that I'd had for over a year. Um, it was kind of just my, when Kitten was at dance class, I'd work on it, that kind of thing. Um, I had stalled for a while because I didn't really know what it was looking like. I had it on a smaller needles, like I had no idea how it was turning out. But I, I finished it, so that's another thing I'm, in addition to the, the bingo, I am trying to clear out a bunch of my older whips. Since I reorganized my room and put all my whips on a bookshelf where I can see them, I realized how many I have. And I'm, I'm working my way through them. Another whip that I finished Although I have not woven in ends. Let me, let me just double check that statement. I might have woven in the ends, but not trimmed them. That would be fun for me. Oh, now I'm not even seeing the other ends. This is the Fika shawl by Carrie Westerman and it's got this lace pattern and then it has a really deep moss stitch border. I think the pattern is wrong because it says to do it like 24 repeats. It's a four row repeat. But like looking at the sample pictures, I'm pretty sure she did 14 repeats. Um, Cause this looks about balanced with the picture. I picked the yarn up for this at the second Edinburgh Yarn Festival of Blessed Memory. 
this is the suggested yarns. I'm pretty sure I got this from Midwinter Yarns. I don't know if they still carry it. This is a finish yarn. If I were to try to pronounce it, I would say Parkalanka. I do not know if that is remotely correct. And then that is, that's the yarn brand. And then that's the yarn itself. The yarn is nice. Um, it's a bit rustier than I would prefer. It's a little warmer toned than something I would particularly wear. I haven't fully blocked it because my children took my blocking mats outside to play and then left them there and they're dirty. And I've tried scrubbing them. I have a few that managed to stay inside. I've tried scrubbing them. I'm not really getting the dirt out. I don't know what else to try and I don't want to use them if they're dirty even if the dirt's like really set into the rubber so I don't know if I just bin them and get more I really hate that idea uh but yeah I washed it and then I kind of stretched it out laid it flat to dry so it's like it's been blocked it just hasn't been pin blocked so it hasn't opened up the way it will for the final that's my wrist. Why does my wrist hate me today? Uh, another finished object that I did that I told you about last time is another muscle burr. And this is knit in unique fibers that I picked up at, I think, the second to last Edim, no, Loch Ness Knit Fest, which was here in Inverness. It might have been the one before that. I did a 50 gram ball, it's sparkly, in this uh, highly variegated rainbow, and a 50 gram ball in this hot pink that is blowing out. It's a very nice blue tone, neon pink. The rainbow side came out ever so slightly longer than the pink side, but I can wear it pink side out with a rainbow brim or rainbow side out with a pink brim. The one-off set I got from Uni Fibers also came with a 20 gram in a purple, um, a darker purple, which I still have. Excuse me. Do I have the tag for Unique Fibers? I don't think I do. So yeah, muscle bear finished, and obviously having finished one muscle bear, I cast on another muscle bear, but we'll get to that in a minute. The other thing I have finished is I am looking through the lace to see how much of this you can see. Uh, again, I've woven in the ends, but I've not trimmed them because while I have washed it and laid it flat to dry, I have not pin blocked it. And these should come out in little points. This is the 24 Birds Shawl by Helen Stewart which was a mystery shawl knit along. It started either in late April or May and went through to the beginning of June. It just, the knit along it's officially ended recently with the prize drawn stuff. I knit this in It was a Ripples Crafts gradient set, Ever Changing Heather. And I picked that up probably 2016. I believe it was at a Loch Ness Knit Festival. Um, 
and it was five 50 gram minis. I have a tiny bit of the first color and the last color left. And then I held it together with, this is from Dye Ninja, who is no longer dying. It is a high twist, fine merino wool. This is really soft in the color platinum. Uh, this was a hundred gram skein. I haven't weighed it, but I mean, this is like 15 grams, 10 grams. So it is a pie shawl, a circular shawl that increases based on the mathematical concept of pie. So every time you double the number of rows, you double the number of stitches. And because it is soft, squishy, squishy yarn, it works out. This pattern looks gorgeous and complicated and beautiful. And it wasn't, it was, I'm looking at myself and not the camera. I'm sorry. I, I habitually do that. That is a thing I do when I watch videos. I'm usually like, I, I'm doing other things and I glance up. So I honestly get weirded out when people are staring at the camera too much, but I understand most people appreciate looking at the camera and not slightly off to one side. Uh, but yeah, I did the light color and it gets a bit darker. I think I made it up to shade four before the birds. And then I did four and introduced five after, and it goes back down to the lightest color. And then I wasn't going to have enough for the bind off. So I just did the darkest color again. Um, I think I did the last row and then the bind off. If I knew what it was going to look like finished, if I had it to do over again, I would start with the darkest color and have the light color next to the silver, which I think is still plenty of contrast, but is a softer transition. And then these are the birds. And I believe they're diving like from this side spread out. Uh, the bird is the V headed down and like here's the tail and here's the wings. And then there's this mock lace cable between the birds. Hello again. It has been a wee while because my oldest got up if you were unfamiliar. If you are new, um, I'm home educating my 11 year old. School just wasn't working out. Uh, so yes, we've, we've done some chores and some other things. And I just have a minute again, I was pretty much done talking about the, the 12, the 24 birds mystery knit along. Uh, and I've just, I've lost my train of thought a tiny bit. The next thing I finished was another lingering whip. I started this just over a year ago. Oh, it's mostly dry. I finished it last night and I washed it and I put it over a radiator, but obviously it's warm. So it's not like the radiators are coming on. It's just at that point an airing rack. And again, I have woven in the ends, but I have not snipped them off because I weave in the ends and then wash it and then trim them. This is the Caterline sweater by Carrie Westerman. It is a boxy oversized drop shoulder uh, with a knit and pearl zigzag texture. You can kind of Uh, the textures on the body, the sleeves are plain, and I knit this in Blacker Yarns Birth Cornish Tin 2, their birthday yarn, from their second, the second time they did a birthday yarn. Um, it is a very rustic 
yarn. I tried it on last night when I finished it. It wasn't quite as warm, but it was still very prickly. And then having it on my lap in the warmer weather also felt very prickly. I was wearing tights and that was not enough of a barrier when it's warm. When it's cold, you don't feel the prickle as much. Um, but yeah, that's, I had, I believe I had 10 skeins of this. I'm pretty sure my original plan was to knit like an all over cable pullover. Um, but I still have, I think it's four skeins that I haven't used. Um, and a lot of little balls because, you know, like I get to the top of the shoulder and rather than start a partial ball that wasn't going to be enough for the next part of the knitting, I just started a new skein so I'd have fewer ends to weave in at this point. It was still, it wasn't too bad except there's like one shoulder that had seemingly 27 ends. That's where all the bits stopped. Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention, this was a finished object last time I was wearing it. It is my Muscle Burr pullover. Uh, this is a pattern by Isolde Teague. It is not yet released. I went back and ripped it out to the short row shaping because uh, it was too big and then re-knit it without the short row shaping. I also made it a little bit shorter. I think I made it a little bit more shorter than I should have. Like if it was even just one inch longer, that would probably be perfect. But I've worn it a bunch since I did that. So yeah, that's, I just changed that. And I will knit it again, but I will do one size down and then do the bust shaping. Cause I think that would give me the kind of fit I'm looking for. Uh, yeah, that's all the finished objects. I also added lengths to my Any Day sweatshirt sleeves. That's another change I made, but I don't have that here to show. Um, that was one of the things I don't think I particularly talked about in the final edition of my January. It had been a finished object that I was wearing in the January video. But then I think the bit where I actually talked about it got cut out. Um, but that had been a test knit. It came out November, I think, October. So that is available. It's very comfortable. The way I knit the sleeves, like, I think I'm just always optimistic about how long the sleeves are. <laughs> so I went back and added two inches to the sleeves for that. That's the only change I've made. And then... Uh, yeah, that kind of brings us up to acquisitions. My acquisitions wraps with life stuff, but let me just, when I finished the, the blanket, I said I needed one more skein and I didn't want the skein to be lonely. So I got some other yarn and I got two balls of West Yorkshire spinners signature four ply in milk bottle because I was watching the Annie Loves Dexter podcast and she mentioned that she was using it for a crochet blanket and she couldn't find it anywhere and then wool war <clears throat> and then wool warehouse had it in stock again so I messaged her to say it was back in stock but because I have a blanket that is being edged in milk bottle I picked up two balls they're probably a different dye a lot. Hopefully they'll be pretty close in color. Uh, two balls of the milk bottle, lest that happen again. And then in one of the sale sections, I picked up these two. It's head over heels, which I believe, yeah, it's Stylecraft sock yarn. Um, and one of them is BU and the other one is Be Bold. There's 
this one is slightly darker tones than this one. That's the difference. But I love rainbow yarn, so I got them both. And they should just knit up in rainbow stripes. Uh, yeah, so that's, I got those along with the rainbow yarn there. One whip to talk about first, speaking of muscle burrs, um, I did say I had finished a muscle burr and I am cast on a new one. This is Giddy Yarns in this gradient that goes from a light speckly purple, bright pink, blues and teals, and then it heads back through the colors again. That was a yarn link. And originally I had just unpicked the two ends and then grafted them together to make a cowl, which was really pretty and cute and I liked it, but I wound up never wearing it. It never quite sat the way I wanted it to. So that is a hardly been worked on, but it is in progress, muscle burr the next. So then I mentioned in my last podcast that I was going, that I had done the Kickstarter for the Wooly Good Gathering in Edinburgh that was upcoming at the time. And I was able, I requested a ticket for the Saturday as part of my Kickstarter backing. And then I was able to book a ticket for the Friday as well. And then I thought I'd booked myself into one of the classes and for the evening event. And then I noticed later that I'd had an email saying it hadn't gone through. And by that point, basically everything was sold out. So I had the ticket for the two days and then I had a friend down in Edinburgh who said that I and a few other knitters from our knitting group could stay at her house in her guest rooms and I booked train tickets. I went down first thing Friday morning. I you know got to her house, dropped my bags, we went to Edinburgh. We went to Edinburgh. We were in Edinburgh. We went to the the venue and did the first day and I'm getting tired and I'm incoherent, but it was a really nice day. And then one of the knitters in the group had bought the tickets for the evening event, but then she decided on the day that she was too tired, she was going to go home and rest. And so she gave me her ticket. She didn't even let me, you know, buy it from her. Um, but this is my carrier bag. The Wooly Good Gathering, and I got stitch markers. There's an orangey ball of yarn, a bluey ball of yarn, and this one says Wooly Good Gathering. So those are the stitch markers. I've got the, the badge. I just turned it upside down. A little wooden badge. There had been some cork uh, project labels, but I believe I gave them to my host as part of the thank you present because she have been looking for more of them and Jen Hogg who had made them didn't bring them because she figured if they were in the Kickstarter bundles no one would be looking to buy them and you know you only have so much room on your stall. So I believe I gave those uh, to my hostess because she wanted more and while I like them I did not need them at that moment because I think what happens 
I also got her some wool wash soap bar because that was what she said she would like. And then at the 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 night the evening event, which was really nice, they had um, Woltings. The diary behind Woltings is also a singer comedian, so she did a bit of her her performance and they did some bingo and in the bingo I won these not for anything bingo related well not for directly bingo related but because I noticed after two rounds that they hadn't called any numbers I think between 70 and 80 um, or maybe it was between 80 and 90 and the app that the person running it had been using to generate the bingo numbers didn't go up that high so she switched to a different thing and gave me those stitch markers at the event i was reasonably subdued i was working on my tulsa tea and my husband's socks i finished a pair of socks for my husband that i gave him for father's day and i will throw a picture in at some point um but those are my two projects i brought with me i had originally cast this on hoping to wear it there was no way I was ever going to finish it in time to wear it, but I was correct. It was a gorgeous, warm, sunny weekend, and in the hall it was even warmer, so it was nice having... I did have another knit t-shirt I had, and like layers and stuff, um, but a, a knit Tolsta would have been perfect. Especially because Rebecca Clow was there. She lives in Edinburgh. Um, yeah, I did take my... I took my muscle burr, but I wore it on the Saturday, my muscle burr pullover, and Isolde had been there on the Friday, so she didn't get to see it on me. And I have some acquisitions from the yarn show. This is a dry wax canvas bag from Midwinter Yarns. It's the kind where you um, roll it and then clip it to keep it dry and it has a beautiful rainbow lining which I believe is linen and then it's got wax canvas pockets in the yellow and I went there first thing to there that was like the first stall I knew what I I'd poked through the rooms and they'd been kind of crowded and then the, they were down in the basement. The basement level wasn't as crowded at that time. So I went to Midwinter Yarns first and I wanted to get some of the hot pink Lithuanian linen. They were sold out of it already. And that was like an hour into the show by the time we got there. But I did get, excuse me, I did get the wax canvas bag. It jumped out and assaulted me and I had to have it. Um, and then inside of this, I have, I went to the Ripple Crafts stand when there was a pause in the crowd and I'd wanted to get more four ply yarn and I wanted to try her Arcadia base, which is, um, it's considered a recycled wool because it's made out of, it's a pre-consumer recycled wool. It's made out of the odds and ends from the spinning process. I just turned a door and I'm checking to see if it's my husband coming. I think maybe it's not. Uh, so I went there to get Arcadia yarn and then I decided that I liked these together for a colorwork project. So I'm going to do a colorwork yoke pullover instead of another muscle bar like I had planned. And this is the color Berry Crush Smoothie. It is 100% Superwash Merino. And then this one is Berries and Ice Cream. And I think they just look stunning together. And then a new to me dyer, the Wool Chemist, 
I actually didn't get into her stand until I was doing like my final circle through the event before leaving Sunday afternoon. Uh, that was the first time like there hadn't been so many people. It's not that the event was super crowded because it wasn't. It's just like some of the stalls were small and you could only fit so many people into it. So if that many people were in the stall, there was still space in the room where you could move around a bit and not feel super claustrophobic. You just couldn't necessarily get into that booth at that moment. Um, but I got a sock set from the Wool Chemist and this is the Deluxe Sock 4 Ply 85% Superwash Merino, 15% Nylon Weight, and the colorway is Rivendell. And I just thought this looked so very Scottish. Um, there's more green that's mostly under the label. And she had samples, she had both like a little swatch knit up and crocheted up so you could see the different colors. And then watching other people's yarn things, I realized afterwards that she did have a plant fiber blend. I can't even remember what it was, but I didn't notice it when I was in her stall. Because that was one of the things I was looking for was plant fiber blends. And Ripples Crafts had had one single skein that she was using, Helen was using, as a test knit to try the yarn before... Um, she hadn't gotten in time to dye up and bring to Wooly Good Gathering. That was a merino linen blend. Um, more about that later. And there was a Glasgow Yarn Shop Cooperative, which was a knitting cake and For the Love of Yarn. And I think there was another person squeezed in there as well. And I picked up this floof, which is the 400 millimeter lace alpaca yak, alpaca yak silk lace. So it has a really gray undertone that tends to be yak, tends to give you a darker base color. In this neon floof, which I thought would be good for a balaclava because I had some neon green yarn, make it fluffy and soft and high vis for when cycling in the winter. So that's the yarn I had. This is a Wooly Good. I got a hank of, not Wooly Good. Um, is it Wooly Goodness? Wooly... The British Yarn Cones. But my husband saw this and immediately claimed it, so. This is getting set aside as a project to knit a thing. Wooly knit. That's what it is. A wooly knit. It was just one of the 200 gram hanks. And now I've got a floof to go with it to knit something apparently for my husband. Uh, so that's, I talked about that yarn and the bag. And then I was in the Dye Gilpin stand. And they had the most beautiful hot pink yarn and my friend Leslie was in the stand at the same time and clearly like knew her way around the the dye gilpin because she was showing off a thing she had made in their yarn using one of their patterns and was looking at other things to acquire and I was like I love this hot pink yarn help me pick like give me a point me to a project that I can knit in it so I can buy it I was thinking like a hat or a cowl or mittens or, you know, an accessory. And she pointed me to a booth sample that was this green sweater with this kind of diamond texture pattern on it. And amazingly, the booth sample fit me. So I have a pack of yarn. And then, having bought the yarn, they emailed me the pattern for the pullover. So, yeah, it, it doesn't fit me with as much ease as the model in those pictures, but the booth sample, 
amazingly fit me. Uh, so that was Wooly Good Gathering, which was just a lovely festival. My only complaint is that the, well, two things. In the hangout room, they had a big room with lots of tables, which is also where they had the event, the, the nighttime event, uh, where you could just like sit and talk and chat and eat cakes. They had a coffee vendor but no tea or any other types of drinks being sold in that room. And then they had musicians performing, which was fine, but because they were amplified when they were playing, when someone was, when they were performing, you couldn't really have a conversation. It wasn't background music, it was loud. So the conversation room was often too loud to have a conversation or even just hang out unless like you were okay with the loud music. For that space, being an enclosed space, it really wasn't all that big. I think unamplified musicians would have been perfect. You still would have been able to hear them clearly. You could sit a little bit closer to the stage if you wanted to just sit there and listen. You could sit a little bit further back if you wanted to just talk. I think that would have been, um, but yeah tea and or other beverages besides coffee and the don't amplify the musicians. Acoustic would have been sufficient. Uh, yeah, so that was really good gathering. As far as life stuff goes around that, the Wednesday before I went down, so Friday I went down to Edinburgh, on the Wednesday at lunchtime, I got a call from Rainbow's school saying that she had fallen and she was she tripped at lunchtime over one of her friend's feet. They'd been playing some kind of duck duck goose variant and she had tripped over her friend's leg and fallen and she was fairly scraped up, but she was also saying, like all scraped up down the left side, but she was also saying her right arm hurt and it looked a little swollen to them. And did I maybe want to take her to the hospital and see if it was broken? So I went to get her and I took her to the hospital and sure enough, it was broken. And it wasn't a huge break. They put her in a plaster. She was bouncing all over the walls while we were there. And then like, as soon as we got home, um, I took her to, there's an ice cream shop on the other side of the woods from us. We went to the ice cream shop as a conciliatory, my poor baby. And then like by the time we were home with our ice creams, she just melted. I mean, she just like crumbled into a puddle on the floor. And why does my arm hurt so much? Why is it so sore? Why did this happen to me? She was just a poor kiddo. Uh, so I think the adrenaline and the excitement of the novelty wore off at that point. And then on the Thursday when I went to pick her up, she was out on the lawn doing one-armed cartwheels because the other arm was in a plaster. So, but you know, then at night again, she was crying and her arm hurt and <sighs> poor kiddo. And she'd also that weekend before brought home a tummy bug. So she'd had it Thursday night we kept her home the Friday and then the Saturday was the second day, keeping home 48 hours. And then she went to a birthday party on the Sunday. She'd been fine since that night, but that night had been awful. It had been like the worst projectile vomiting we've had from any of our children. Part of the problem is kitten, not kitten, rainbow, sometimes sleepwalks. She doesn't quite wake up all the way. And I think that's what happened to her. She wasn't fully awake. So she was wandering down the hallway, lost and confused. And it was a big mess. So Rainbow had a really rough night on the Thursday, but she was feeling better by the Sunday when it was, I mean, she'd been feeling better most of the next day. Uh, and definitely on the Saturday, there had not been any further incidents. So for the Sunday, we let her go to her friend's birthday party. 
Saturday night, Chris and I both, like Saturday afternoon, I had barely ate anything. And then I thought my tummy was upset because I hadn't eaten anything. And then I did eat something and my tummy was still upset. And anyway, that night, Chris and I got it. And that was one of the worst nights I'd had. And then a few days later, Kitten got it. Or the next day, was it the next day? Anyway, we all had it. And I feel like I had it the worst based on getting to clean up for everyone except Chris. Um, sorry, my eye has just started twitching a little bit. But when I went to Willie Good Gathering, I've been better. I've been fine. But my tummy was still like, uh, food. We're not sure about that because it had gone so terribly badly last weekend. And it wasn't until the sun, the Saturday, I think I said I did a final, it was Friday, Saturday event. It wasn't until Saturday lunchtime when I finally was like, wow, food sounds good. There was a bow fusion truck that had uh, either pulled, well, they had a couple of different things, but for me, it was the pulled chicken or the brie, ooh, pulled chicken and mango or brie and garlic were the two flavors that I couldn't decide between. So I got both and I ate both and I thought I was going to feel horribly sick after I'd eaten them because that's basically what had happened every time I'd eaten anything for the previous week. But I just felt slightly full, slightly, not even like uncomfortably full because I'd eaten two lunches, slightly full. And I was like, oh, it's a miracle. My body wants food again. Uh, yeah, that was a really good bow truck. And so Kitten, no, Rainbow had broken her arm on the Wednesday and then the following Wednesday, I got a phone call from the school at lunchtime saying that because it had been a particularly sunny day, they had been keeping her in at lunch and break times, but the bell had rung at the end of lunch and they said, why don't you go outside and queue up with your classmates to come back in, just get a little bit of, you know, a few breaths of fresh air, a little bit of sunshine, she tripped on her way out the door and broke her left arm. So I had to take her back to the hospital and we saw the same people and explained the same basic story over again. And they did x-rays and sure enough, she had broken her left wrist and she hadn't, it wasn't as, neither of them went all the way through the bone and it wasn't as big of a, break as the right wrist so she was able to just go straight to a splint for the left wrist um but yeah she broke both her wrists in the space of a week the following wednesday when we did not i mean the following wednesday i was like oh, it's, it's one o'clock we did not get a phone call from the school so that was nice um, and then we went for the follow-up appointment to see if her cast was ready to be removed. And we had to explain which wrist we were there to be seen for. Although she did kind of check both. And Rainbow got her plaster cast off and then had two splints, a brace on each wrist for another couple of weeks. Um, and then like, she couldn't do dance class. When she broke the first one, they gave me the restrictions and they said no contact sports, which to me is like rugby. Rugby is a contact sport. Almost everything else isn't. Like if it's not a team sport where you might collide with other people, it's not a contact sport. But then when we went back to have the plaster cast removed, they were like, no, she can't do anything where she might fall and land on her wrists and re-injure them. Like that's everything. 
she in both cases she broke her wrists just being outside and being seven um so yeah she wasn't able to do much of anything for a while and in fact was cleared from her splints just the weekend before the sports day was on a Tuesday, I think. And so she was able to run in sports day. It was the first thing she was able to do. And they were like, no, you haven't practiced. We don't have you in the role for the thing. They weren't gonna let her. But one of the other girls wound up not being able to participate in sports day. So they just slunted her in in the other child's place and she did very well she had a good showing and the heavens opened up and it was a huge deluge right as it was they go from the oldest to the youngest and then they run the races and then they do the oldest to the youngest again it was right when they got to the youngest classes the last couple of groups of the p1s that the heavens opened up and it was a biblical rain as we're all standing out there on the field. So that was fun. <laughs> but at least the weather had held for most of the morning. There is an ice lolly being consumed, if you can hear the slurping. Uh, yeah, so that was, that was really good gathering. And... Um, then that was the end of April. The end of May was my birthday weekend. Uh, Rainbow gave me this necklace, which is two interlocking rings with little cubic zirconians on them, which is supposed to be a mummy daughter necklace. And she also gave me a blanket, which she promptly commandeered and went off to cuddle in. And my oldest gave me a nightgown and a sweatshirt and promptly commandeered the sweatshirt and went off and lived in it for a couple of weeks until I bought her her own version of the sweatshirt in the smallest adult size that was still available. Um, and Chris got me power tools for the garden. I got a head trimmer and then a strimmer so I can use power tools except my wrist has been this doesn't feel like it did well it feels a little bit like it did when it was hurting but it honestly had not been hurting for a while um after i fell at my birthday weekend i did i went out and i had to, to buy this brace because my wrist was aching just to remind me not to use it and like that was a couple of days and then it was mostly better and then it hadn't been hurting until today so I don't know why it's hurting today but I'm really annoyed about it because I haven't even used my power tools recently but it was basically the kind of thing where you know I would do 15 minutes to half an hour with the hedge trimmer or the strimmer and then my hands would be like no you can't do that because I have tendonitis in both wrists but that hurts in a different way than this is hurting and yeah but our garden i've done a lot of time in the garden when it's not raining and i've been very frustrated when it is raining and my garden has gone from looking completely abandoned to merely looking neglected which is a huge improvement and it is a glorious sunny warm day for the first time in ages and i'd really like to be outside gardening and instead my wrist hurts just just like moving, ow, see, moving my arm. I need to stop moving my arm because all I did was straighten my arm and I got shooting pain in my wrist. Stop doing that. So that last weekend was my birthday weekend and my friend had messaged me, I think it was back in March and said, hey, there's the Strathpeffer Wool Festival. Would you like to go together for your birthday weekend? And then we'll go to Tain and stay at this hotel and go to this spa and have dinner at this restaurant and just have an escape girl weekend. Then she got really, really, really busy and didn't 
book any of it until the weekend before. So the only part we were able to do was the yarn festival and the hotel. But we walked around Tain and I mean, we, we did eat food. We just didn't go to the restaurant she had initially picked out and hung out and talked. And it was a very lovely weekend, minus the falling and getting my wrist bit. So Helen of Ripple's Crafts was also at this yarn festival and she brought with her her new merino linen base, which I had requested. And this is the same Berry Crush color from the 100% merino. This is a non superwash wool with nylon it is it was sold to her as a sock yarn with the nylon no with the linen being a nylon replacement uh, but i got three skeins in this lovely berry crush color and i am making myself a ribbed tank this is the sporty tank by jackie seasluck and then i also got their it's a set where you can have sleeves and then the pattern has instructions for just having it come like the top so you can wear it over the ribbed vest and then optional sleeves or you can knit it as a full length pullover. And I think I'll be able to get this out of one and a half skeins. It looks very long and skinny, but when I try it on, um, this purple stitch marker was like right at the top of my waistband and I would like it to be a fair bit longer. So I'm going to keep going and then I should still have um, a skein and a half left and I know the knitter I mentioned I'd stayed with down in Edinburgh had done a sample for it for Helen to have it tangled gala shields which was like the weekend after the Strathpeffer show, or maybe two weekends after. I did not go. Um, it's Gala Shields is down near Edinburgh. It's not anywhere near me up in Inverness. Uh, but she had knit a sample doing a fingering weight Tolsta tee where she had done a blue color for the top and then striped in a green color and lace at the hem and it looks so beautiful. So maybe I can get a purple and do a color block Tolsta like that. That sounds wonderful. Um, I mentioned Annie Uti Knits earlier and she's got a lace t-shirt where it's kind of a boxy fit at the top. And I don't really like a lot of boxiness at the shoulders. I feel it makes me look very broad and then very square um, without any kind of hourglassing or anything for the waist that I would prefer. So I don't tend to like really boxy fits at the top. So I looked at the lace pattern, but I thought it might not fit the way I want it to through the shoulders, but I can use the lace from that pattern with the Tulsta and do a mashup and I think that would be really pretty like that sample one. Anyway I cast this on as my birthday knit although I think it was a few days later that I actually started it June 1st maybe uh, and I did stripe in the second color there are some like purpley splodges in one section, but I don't think that's one ball or the other. I think that's just, you know, natural variation in hand dyed yarns. And yeah, so now that I have finished, I was working on this because it had been sunny around my birthday and warm. And then most of June was meh again. So I kind of put this aside and was working to finish the Caterline pullover and having finished that this is the next one to work on again and i was also thinking 
even if it's not like warm enough to wear a vest top most of the year here in Scotland. It could be a layering piece as an underlayer to be nice and, and warm. And both merino and linen are good at temperature regulation. Uh, both wool and linen are strong fibers that don't need to be washed with everywhere. So yeah, this should be, hopefully, it'll be next to skin soft. I mean, I can already feel how lovely and swishy it is. I think I did wash it. Yes, I knit the back and then you break the yarn and add on the, the front bits and then eventually joining the rounds to go. And I did wash the back for my gauge swatch. So yeah, I'll do another couple inches on this. Despite being two by two rib, it is knitting up and fingering weight, no less. It is knitting up very, very quickly. I've got some coordinating stitch markers butterflies. That is lots of fun. So I got that at, oh, I, I got Wooly Wormhead's new book, but I forgot to bring it over. So you'll just have to believe me. Um, when Wooly had announced it was available for pre-order, I did order it on a large South American river platform website uh, but they often do a thing with small publishers where they will take pre-orders but not actually pre-order and then the book did sell out rather quickly so that was not going to be able to fit it but Helen of Ripple's Crafts did have she'd had it could you please let me do this uh, Helen had had it with her at Wooly Good Gathering, but sold out by the time I made it to her stand. And then she had brought a few copies. She'd managed to get another four and brought them to Strathpheffer. So I was able to buy one there. And then I guess if she had any left, she took them to Gala Shields. She had thought other people would be vending the book at Gala Shields which is why she decided to take it to Strathpheffer. Um, and then this is my bag of yarn from Strathpheffer Yarn Festival. And you will say, Jennifer, that is a very large bag of yarn that you have acquired, given that the three skeins of the merino linen are not even in there. But I got, this is, don't fall out. This is 480 grams of a 50 wool, 50 silk blend from King Craig, Craig, Craigston. If you're in Scotland, you'll know they're, they're milliseconds that they sell, like cones and stuff. So I got this blue color and it's a bit like crispy on the feel, but that is, it's gonna be from a cone, it's not washed, it'll have the spinning oils on it. So this is 480 grams, and I thought this could be my next muscle burr. And that's just a bag that was up. And then I got the same yarn, excuse me, in a, Kind of purpley, pinky, tweedy look. And this is 350 grams. That ball just fell out. 350 grams. Which I thought could be another Tolsta or a Tolsta tank. I did buy the Tolsta tank when the pattern came out. But then I'm looking at the weather like, why would I want a knit tank top? Unless it was, of course, like a wool silk blend, and then it could also be a layering piece. Come, like this little ball that they put in to make up the weight is absolutely perfect for a swatch. The rest of this bag of wool 
Um, I also got some dryer balls, some wool dryer balls and soap and a soap dish. The rest of this yarn is my friend's yarn. So this is fine Shetland Dornick 100% pure wool in the color broom, which I believe is another word for gorse. And she got the, the mustardy goldy color. And this is Marum. And Okay, this is blackcheviot.com. Oops, that's got a bit of floof in it, which is a natural dark gray. And there's a bunch of skeins of that. Yeah, that's one of them has a tag. So this is three ply DK dark grain, dark gray, 50 grams under 10 meters, 100% sheviot, undyed. I think that says Morit, which is the color of the sheep because the different colors all have names. And I have a little thing for Strathpeffer Garden open day, but I completely forgot about it. It's already passed. And then this was another booth, and I think my friend has the tag for this. This is a natural brown color, and they mentioned that they get the yarn spun at the same place, so this will be the same. So I'm going to knit a colorwork pullover using these very autumnal colors and the dark gray as the main for my friend. And I was looking at yarn patterns, um, pullover patterns, and I think I have selected a pattern that'll be very cute. I just need her measurements. She's very busy. She has stuff going on, like three things every day in June. Completely, completely overbooked in what I hope is a very fulfilling way. And we can sort that out later. Um, but I do have space on my needles for a DK weight jumper, although that dye gill pin hot pink is looking at me like you could cast me on next. But I want to finish the ribbed pullover, the ribbed tank rather, um, and then I can maybe do my next summer weight one. And on my bingo crafting sheet, I did change one, um, which had been finish a quilt top. I have not worked on my quilt top or even gotten it out or even unburied my table so I can use it for sewing at all. Um, so instead, that is knit the jumper for my friend. I have knit five sweaters for me, which in parentheses said three current rips, one of which was the muscle burr, one of which was the Caterline. The other one is my Christmas festive yoke pullover, um, which I may or may not have shown previously because I can't remember if that made it in the video, but I did talk about it in January. Uh, and then the Tolsta Tea is my third finished one. So I finished the Muscle Burr, I finished the Caterline. I knit a Tolsta, I've got the tank on. The tank top is almost finished. That will be four. Um, so that one I will probably get done. I've got finish three things for Chris he did get socks. That was last year, Stevens West's secret sock along or surprise sock along. Surprise sock along, is that what it was? Uh, and he's very excited. Chris is very excited that Stephen West has announced that it is going again this summer and will be starting soon. Um, and then I finished the socks that I never actually told you about, which was another, it's just a two by two rib sock in a charity colorway that Helen of Ripples Crafts dyed up 
a number of years ago for the RNLI, the Royal Navy Lifeguard something. I don't know what it is, but it is the uh, Coast Guard. In the US, it would be the Coast Guard is privately funded here in the UK, even though the UK is a tiny island nation with a lot of coastline and people would need help. Um, so every so often Helen does a charity colorway. Every so often the charity colorway is for them. That is one of the organizations she repeatedly funds. So it was a sock yarn I picked up. I said somewhere else it was the learning to swim color, but then I was looking at it and it's almost swimming is the name of the colorway. Uh, two by two rib socks. He'll flap and gusset for Chris. So that's two things I finished for him. And then if I do the other pair of socks or the, the balaclava and the hot green, what do you call it hot green? The neon green. Uh, other things on here are more out than in. I was doing really well at that until I went to Strathpeffer. And I'm not even counting Chrissy's wool because that is not, while I have possession of it, it is not my wool. Um, but yeah, I haven't weighed the Caterline yet because it's not 100% dry. And I don't, yeah, I haven't included, ow. I haven't included the wool silk blend that I picked up Though I think I did include the merino linen in my thing, and I am, I'm, without those things, I was a, probably around, I have it right here. This was page one. I am on to page two. So I have used 2,442 grams of yarn and I have acquired 3,010 grams of yarn. And again, that doesn't include the merino silk and the number used does not include the caterline. So, or that does include Chris's socks. So yeah, I need to finish more things and buy less things. But as Helen points out, she's got the same Helen of Giddy Yarns has, apparently I like Scottish hand dyers named Helen. Um, it's largely just about understanding one's own acquisitions versus use and trying to finish projects so they go in the used up pile. Uh, yeah, that is, I've two of, I mean, a couple of my other things on there are in progress. We're about halfway through the year, so I'd say I might get all my goals for the end of the year. I think that catches us up pretty much everything. Uh, it'll be summer holidays next week. We're going to go to Nairn again. I mentioned that Nairn has a wool shop, and that's where I'm going to look for supplemental wool for knitting Chris's mystery knit along socks. Uh, yeah, hopefully the weather is more like this and less like the raining. Hopefully my wrist stops hurting, whatever is wrong with it, because today would have been a perfect day to be outside and doing gardening. I could get so much done on a day like this, but apparently I can't get anything done because it's really hard to do stuff with my left hand and my right hand is just not letting me do anything. As always, I will hope that I can keep this as a regular thing and not a horribly sporadic thing. Now I've got hiccups. I hope you are well. And if you made it this far, then, I mean, we've got to be like the best of friends. If you put up with all of this blether, please like the video. If you want to see other videos like this, you can subscribe. Although from what I understand, that doesn't particularly help you or me at all, but it does make me very happy. Uh, but giving it a thumbs up 
tells the algorithm that this isn't terrible and maybe show it to other people and also makes me very happy. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.